In this video, we're going to turn our game into an actual game by making a way to lose. That's right, we'll create a game over state. Pretty essential to any game, this one included. So let's dive right into it. So let's begin by dragging our score script under the scripts folder just to clean up from the last video. And currently the way we keep track of whether or not we've collided with something is using a script that sits on the player called player collision. And while it makes sense to detect player collision on the player object itself, the player object is not a good place to end our game. That should be done using some kind of game manager. So let's go ahead and create one. Let's right click in our hierarchy to create an empty object. Let's reset the transform and let's name it game manager. Let's also drag it to the top just to make it clearer to see. Let's then add a new component and let's call that game manager as well. Let's hit create and add and this component will be responsible for changing states in our game. It can do stuff like start and stop a game, restart a game and display UI on the screen if you want a score counter, a game over screen or transition to other menus like a main menu or a level selector. In our case we're going to make some code that will restart our game when we hit something or when we fall off the edge. So let's double click the game manager. The first thing we need to do is delete our two standard functions. Let's also delete the two using tags up here. Let's then write a new custom function void and let's call it something like end game or game over. I'm just going to write end game here, two parentheses and then the curly brackets. And in here we'll do some different stuff. But for now let's just display a message to the console to let us know whether or not we're calling the function at the right time. Let's write debug.log and then insert something like game over. We can then save this and head back into Unity. So now our game manager has a function called endGame that will display a message in the console. But we need a way to access our game manager and call this function. To do that, we go to our player, find our player collision script and double click on it. Normally when we need to access something within another script, we use a reference. You can see up here we're using a public player movement called movement in order to be able to disable our player movement when we collide with something. And we could go ahead and do the same thing with our game manager here. We could write public game manager and then call it something like game manager. Then save that and in the inspector now drag in our game manager. And this will work fine in our instance. But if we wanted our player to die at some point, meaning that we would have to remove him from the scene and then maybe spawn him back in, because the game manager doesn't sit on the same object, we would lose this reference. It's actually really easy to show you this. Let's go under assets and let's drag our player in here to create a prefab out of him. Let's then delete the player from our scene and drag him back in. You can see that under game manager, it now says none because the prefab itself is not linked to the game manager and there's not really a good way around this. So instead we don't use a variable. Let's delete this here. What we do is we actually search for the game manager when we want it. And Unity has a nice way of searching for script. To do that, let's go to the place in our code where we want to end the game, which is right around here. And let's write find object of type. And the type that we want to find is the game manager. We also need to put a open and close parentheses. The syntax is actually very similar to get component, which allows us to find a component on the object. Here we also use the smaller than and greater than signs. And inside we write the component that we want. Up here, for example, we could actually replace movement, the reference to our player movement script with get component. And then make sure to write player movement like this and open and close some parentheses. This is actually going to do the exact same thing. And it's the same thing with our find object of type. We can actually now just use dot and access all of this stuff under our game manager. We can then write end game and you will notice that it doesn't show up. The reason for this is not that we don't have a valid reference to the game manager, but that our game manager actually hides this function. That's because it's currently marked as private. We need to instead go in here and write public void, save that, and we should now be able to access it in here. So let's write dot end game, and you can see that it now shows up. Of course, whenever you use find object of type, you need to make sure that you do at least have one object of the type you're searching for, or this is going to return an error. So just make sure you have game manager in your scene. So let's Let's save this, head into Unity, and we should see the variable disappear, but that's alright because we're searching for it without a variable. If we try and play the game now, we're actually going to get some errors. You can see here that it says unassigned reference exception, the variable player of score has not been assigned, and the variable of follow player has not been assigned. That's because both on our main camera, we reference the player and we need to drag him in there, and under our text object that displays our score, we also have a reference to the player, so we need to drag him in there as well. That's two other places where we could use find object of type if we wanted to have the ability to swap our player in and out of the scene. I just wanted to show you how it's done. Do note that it is of course not as performant as creating a direct reference as we do with a variable. So let's clear those errors and when we now hit play we should see that when we collide with something it says game over in the console. 
But we don't only want to display this message when we collide with something, we also want to display it when we fall off the edge. In order to do that, let's go into our player again, and now let's open the player movement script. In here we keep track of the player's position and the forces that we want to add to him in order to make him move. Inside of our fixed update, we can go ahead and add another line, and what I want to do is I want to check if our position on the y-axis gets below a certain number. That means that if our player falls down and reaches say, negative 1, he has fallen off the edge and we want to restart the game. So to do that through code, we write if, then we use rb.position and we access the y value. We then check if that is less than, and I'm just going to hard code in a small negative number. I'm going to put negative 1. Let's again open and close some curly brackets. And if we reach this position, we can do the same thing as we did in our player collision. We can say find object of type. The type we're looking for is the game manager. And we can then write dot end game. So once you get easy to the syntax, it's actually really easy to do. We can then save the script, head back into Unity, and we should now see that when we fall off the edge here, we see a bunch of game over statements in the console. The reason why is that we are checking for this Y value each fixed update call, and that gets done a lot of times a second. But we actually only want to do this once. We don't want the game to end multiple times. So what we do is go inside of the game manager, and there's a little nifty trick we can use here. All we want to do is create a boolean up here. Remember, booleans are used to store a value that can either be true or false, and we'll call this one game has ended. We'll default it to false. Then in our end game method, we'll set game has ended to true. And now we can make an if statement that checks whether or not our game has already ended. So we'll say if game has ended is equal to false. Well, then we want to do these things. Then we want to actually end the game. So the first time our end game method is called, game has ended is going to be false. And so this is going to be true. Then we're going to set game has ended equal to true. We're going to show game over in the console and we can do other stuff like restarting the game. And then the next time it's called, game has ended is now going to be true. And so the if statement here is going to return false and this is not going to be called. So our game will only end once. If we save this now, we should see it in Unity as well. If we hit play and jump off the edge here, we can see that only one message is displayed in the console. And it doesn't matter whether or not we are colliding with something or falling off the edge, it will always only display one. So the final thing we need to do is actually restart the game. And we do that again inside of our game manager. First off, I want to create a separate function for this. Let's call this one void restart. We then need to make sure to call this method. We do that by writing restart up here. So now when our game ends, and after we show a message in the console, we're going to call the restart method, which means that in our code, we'll jump from here to down here, and everything inside these two curly brackets will be executed. And restarting a scene in Unity is actually fairly simple. First off, we need to go up here and include Unity Engine, Dot scene management. We need to use this whenever we need to change to a different scene or reload the scene that we are already on. We then go into our restart method and we write scene manager, then press dot and you can see all of the stuff that our scene manager can do. It can merge scenes, load scenes, get information about active scenes and some other more advanced functions. We want to load a scene and the scene that we want to load is currently called level 1. We can see in Unity that that's the name of our scene. But if you have multiple levels in our game, it's not always going to be level 1. The scene that we want to load is the scene that is currently active. So we can actually get the active scene by going scene manager dot get active scene. Again, open and close some parentheses. Make sure you have all of the parentheses in here. And we then use dot name. So this piece of code returns the name of our current scene. And this piece of code loads the scene with a given name. Everything is done using the scene manager. So we can now close this with a semicolon, and when we save this and head into Unity, we should actually see it working. However, there are going to be a slight problem with this. Let's hit play. We can see that when we collide with the block, it instantly restarts, but it looks a little weird. And also, it restarts very, very quickly. We want a slight delay so we can actually see the collision. The first problem is with the lighting. And it's something that Unity has been doing recently, which is a little bit weird. If we go to Window, then Lighting, it will open the lighting panel. In here, we can see that this small checkbox down here is set to Auto. This means that Unity will automatically detect changes in lighting and do the necessary processing to show an accurate lighting representation. However, when reload scenes in the Unity editor, Unity doesn't have time to do these calculations. And so we get a scene with very, very bland lighting. All we need to do is disable auto. And if the lighting in your scene now looks weird, simply hit build and Unity is going to calculate the lighting. Of course, this means that every time we change something, 
it's probably a good idea to go back and hit build. And I normally leave auto on when testing, but if it's annoying you a lot, you can disable it. And you can now see that when we hit play and the level restarts, our lighting looks perfect. However, we still need to code in a slight delay. To do that, we go back into our script and instead of directly calling the function, we use something called invoke. Let's write invoke and invoke takes two parameters. The first one in quotation marks is the name of our function, which is restart. The second one is the delay, the amount of time before calling the function. And we could definitely just hard code this in. We could write two here and it would wait two seconds. But I think it's better to go up here and make it into a variable. This way we can easily tweak it in the inspector. The variable is going to be a public float. That means that we're storing some kind of decimal place number. We'll call it restart delay and set it equal to one by default. We can then take our restart delay and put it in place of the number two here. So now whatever our restart delay is equal to is the amount of time that we will wait before invoke is going to call the restart method and our scene is going to load. Let's save this, head back into Unity and hopefully everything is going to be working now. We just need to hit play and when we collide with something, you can see that we get a second to see the collision, which looks a bit nice. And it's the same thing when we fall off the edge. The final thing that you might need to do if Unity complains a little bit when reloading the scene is add it to the build settings. To do that you go to file, build settings and in here we have a list of all of the scenes that we want to include when we export our game. Currently there's nothing in here and that's not a problem because we only have a single scene and Unity is smart enough to know that that's the scene we want to use. But if you have multiple scenes it's very very important that you add all of them in here. We can just click add open scenes or you can always just drag them from the project panel. You can see that our scene has a name, a checkbox to say whether or not it's included and a build index. If you have multiple levels, you normally don't load them by name, but by build index, so that Unity will transition to the next scene in the queue. It's pretty cool. We can just close that now. Let's also take our game manager and drag it under the scripts folder. And that should be it. Nothing should change in our case, but it should hopefully fix some errors if you have any. That was pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future episode. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all the awesome people who donated in February, and a special thanks to Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, James Callahan, and Jason Latito. If you want to become a patron yourself, you can do so at patreon.com slash Thanks a lot, guys.